You look at a couple and you go, oh, that's a really codependent couple. And you look at a couple and you say, oh, that's an interdependent couple that really wants to create a system that supports each other. Yeah. What's the difference? Codependency is one direction only. So codependency is uh, my focus is all on you and not on me. Um, I focus on you, so you will focus on me. Hey friends, welcome. Welcome everyone. Insights at the Edge live here on Sounds True One. We have a special guest, Stan Tatkin, someone I always enjoy learning from, talking to. He increases all of our relational IQ, in my opinion, a whole several degrees. You'll have your chance here at the after show to ask Stan your questions, challenging questions. His new book is called In Each Other's Care, a guide to the most common relationship conflicts and how to work through them. So if you're experiencing some kind of relationship challenge, stay on for the after show, bring it forward. Let's see how Stan handles it. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Stan Tatkin. He's a teacher, clinician, researcher and developer of the psychobiological approach to couples therapy. It's known as PACT, P-A-C-T. He's beloved by colleagues and clients alike as an expert on human behavior and couple relationships. He's known as a therapist's therapist and has trained thousands of therapists around the world. He's the author of six best-selling books, including Wired for Love, We Do, which is a beautiful book from Sounds True that you can work with if you're thinking about getting married. It's kind of like this book you can do with your partner before we say we do or after we say we do. And as I mentioned, a new book called In Each Other's Care. Stan, welcome. Hey, Tammy. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm dandy, actually. Really good. I'm happy, happy. happy to hear that and happy to be with you. Same here. One of the themes you emphasize throughout your work is this notion of cultivating secure, functioning relationships. Yes. What are they? What are the characteristics of a secure, functioning relationship? So secure, functioning is not the same as secure attachment, which is a biological matter of uh, bonding. Secure functioning is more along the lines of social contract theory. Basically, it is if it's two people, could be three, could be four, uh, right? It doesn't matter. But if it's two people, uh, it assumes that they are equals, shared power, shared authority coming together in a symmetric relationship, unlike childhood, based on terms and conditions, deal or no deal, and uh, also based on the idea that the relationship must always remain fair, just, and mutually sensitive in a full collaboration, cooperation, even under stress. Simple, but very hard to do. Tell me why it's so hard to do. Because we're human primates, and human primates are by nature difficult animals. We're animals. Uh, imagine your two-year-old uh, with all the rights of an adult. Uh, that would be a little frightening. Uh, Two-year-olds uh, represent the off-the-factory line uh, human primate, which means that we're fundamentally, along with other wonderful things, but fundamentally selfish, self-centered, uh, warlike, aggressive, opportunistic, moody, fickle, and xenophobic. And therefore, knowing that we have to be civilized uh, with agreements and permission to enforce laws and principles and all sorts of things that allow us to get along with each other. The same goes for a couple. That union alliance has to be based on on, on agreements and principles. Basically, the couple 
co-creating a culture from scratch, their own culture. Let's make it real for people and use you as an example. Oh. And then maybe, you know, I'll talk a little bit about me, but let's start with you. In terms of embracing secure functioning relationships, yeah. what part has been the hardest for you to be like, oh yeah, I know how to do this in this situation? What, what's been your sort of growth path? Uh, it, moving from uh, a one person system to a two person psychological system for me, has been a, a, a matter of growth and growing up. It's been a matter of understanding how these systems work, not how I would like them to work, but how they do actually work. And, uh, and then also uh, learning to be disciplined by doing the right thing when the right thing is the hardest to do. And that is basically dealing with my own uh, internal three-year-old uh, my need to be right, uh, my need to have things my way, uh, my need to be understood and, uh, you know, and cared for without having to do anything. Um, you know, my, uh, uh, basically, uh, my uh, personhood as a single person uh, coming out of a family that where I was privileged. Um, and so all of that with the responsibilities of being with another person in a, in a team like situation, and also to be a parent uh, dealing with uh, the raising of, of a child. So all of this has uh, challenged me uh, because I, I value my relationships to be better, to do better, uh, which is a constant. Uh, it's, uh, it's still happening today. <laughs> it's a work in progress. This notion of a two person psychological system, aren't I also a one person psychological system? So am I both at the same time, if I'm in a committed relationship, like I'm also just me, I have my needs, my things, I don't wanna think about your needs and your things. And it seems like when you describe this secure functioning two person psychological unit, it's all we, 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 we all the time. What about the I? Yeah, you know what's interesting too, because this, uh, you know, our theories and our our approaches, our philosophies often track along with um, the the greater culture, the greater uh, society. And so there was a time when uh, the, when the, you know we and us uh, became sort of a, an anathema in in popular psycho, uh, psychotherapy with Gestalt and uh, humanistic existentialism. You know, getting away from. Um, we to I, um, Murray Bowen, right? Uh, you know, differentiation, I, me, my, um, what I feel like, as opposed to this, uh, this ego mass of fusion or merging. So, but today we also have gone too far with the idea of independence. Independence as opposed to interdependence where we are not self-made, where we are not lone wolves, where we are accountable in uh, relationships, we are not, we're pack animals. And so this idea of getting along and being relational is, uh, is uh, an imperative for society to continue and for relationships to be long lived and happy. Uh, I'm concerned with both of those happiness and longevity. So the we here does not uh, meld people into codependency or dependency. Interdependency is you and I have the same things to gain and the same things to lose. Therefore, we're equal shareholders and we have to work together as two separate individuals. Okay. I want to really uh, go a little deeper and clarify this because, you know, I've now been exposed to your approach, the PACT approach for longer than a decade. And often when I describe it to people, and I've gotten so much value out of it, and I have a further journey to make, but uh, I'm, I'm on the journey. But when I describe it to people, they often say, that sounds a lot like codependency, Tammy, the way you're describing it. You know, you're supposed to know what your partner needs and attend to it instead of saying like, hey, why don't you just take care of yourself? You know, I'll take care of myself. You take care of yourself. We can come back together in a while, but I don't. I don't really always want to be 
interdependently taking care of what you need. I mean, you go so far as to say you are your partner's whisperer. It's your job. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, is that my job? I thought my job was, you know, to be available, but they, they, you know, they, they can take care. They have a job taking care of themselves. So here's the core question. The difference between a system that values interdependence and codependence. So you and I can agree to live uh, independent, independently, like you talked about, just like uh, Sartre and Bouvier did, right? Uh, and there are other examples of, of, of coupledom where they lived separately and they came together whenever they felt like it and they were still primary uh, partners, right? Uh, throughout life, they were, but they didn't really live together or they weren't, they, they didn't do the typical kind of, uh, you know, dyadic, pair bonding situation, right? That's fine. As long as two people agree, you and I could agree to, uh, to uh, be polyamorous. Um, we could agree to have consensual non-monogamy in our relationship. We could do anything we want. We just have to agree and we have to think like adults and predict, plan, and prepare uh, for what could possibly go wrong that would be uh, uh, felt as uh, unfair, unjust, too insensitive, right? That's what we would have to do. So it, again, it comes down to organization. How are we going to organize this? We don't just, we're not chill. We just don't run into this and see uh, what happens. There is some kind of predicting and planning that goes on because we want to, uh, we want to enjoy ourselves and we can't if we feel threatened by each other. And the human capacity to experience threat, even if it's not someone intending to be threatening, is legendary. And so here we're talking about the biology of the human primate, uh, the history of the human primate, how we're wired, uh, what is our uh, legacy, but also um, what works and doesn't work in, uh, in systems where people uh, are wanting to stay together without getting uh, to a place where they go to war, which is very easy for us to do. All right. I'm still not clear. So I'm going to ask it again. Sure. You look <laughs> at a couple and you go, oh, that's a really codependent couple. And you look at a couple and you say, oh, that's an interdependent couple that really wants to create a system that supports each other. Yeah. What's the difference? Codependency is one direction only. So codependency is, uh, you know, uh, my focus is all on you and not on me. Um, I focus on you, so you will focus on me. This goes back to childhood. My parent is depressed. My parent is alcoholic. My parent is not there for me. In order for me to feel safe and secure, I have to make the, the relationship in my head uh, secure. What I'm doing is I am trying to make you okay so that you can take care of me. That's codependency. My focus is on you in hopes that you will give me what I feel I deserve and have been wanting. And when you don't, I'm quite angry. So it's in one direction only. It's not reciprocal. I don't expect you. I want you to return the favor, but I don't expect it and demand it. Um, I'm too afraid of losing you to uh, declare my own rights and privileges. And I am not acting as an equal uh, partner here. I'm a passenger of sorts. That's different. So That's codependency. Is, is reciprocal or mutual codependency the same as being interdependent? Well, codependency would have been a, a better term, but it was uh, already co-opted, you know, uh, and we know uh, the time it was, I was with those uh, in that generation of therapists uh, with John Bradshaw and Pia Melody and so on. So, th but, but we forget that that came out of AA, that came out of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, of the co-alcoholic, the enabler. Um, and then it got morphed into something else that uh, is now used in the popular uh, uh, population as a cudgel a way to beat somebody up or to devalue them or call them borderline or call them, you know, codependent as if it's some kind of disease. Um, we are, in fact, dependent animals. We are from the beginning to the very end. Any other idea uh, of that is denial. We are 
dependent creatures. We know this. We learn independence out of being dependent. There are a lot of people out here, out there, that call independence something that is actually an adaptation to early attachment neglect. So I don't know the difference, maybe, between uh, being independent and interdependent because I have an allergy to dependency. So I deny it, and I don't like you clinging. I don't like you depending on me in any way. It would be really great if uh, you just did your thing, I did my thing, you live downstairs, I live upstairs. Uh, let's not give each other gifts this Christmas, let's just call it even, we just don't do it. That is the, uh, the, the narrative of people that we consider in, in attachment research as being in the distancing group, people who are oriented uh, toward independence, but is not true independence. Mm -hmm.